A better world is near. Do current world events indicate that the end of the world is near? If so, can we do anything to survive the end of the world? What will happen after the end? The articles in this issue will reveal the Bible's comforting answers to those questions. We need a better world. We are a world in turmoil, stated Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations. Would you not agree? The news is full of distressing reports, disease and pandemics, natural disasters, poverty and hunger, pollution and global warming, crime, violence and corruption, wars. Clearly, we need a better world, a world where there is perfect health, safety and security for everyone, abundant food, a healthy environment, justice for all, global peace. What though do we mean when we speak of a better world? What will happen to the world we live in now? What can we do to live in a better world? Is this world going to end? Perhaps you are aware that the Bible speaks of the end of the world. Is it referring to the end of the human race? Will planet Earth become a lifeless wasteland or be destroyed completely? The Bible's answer to both of these questions is no. What will not end? Mankind. What the Bible says. God did not create the earth simply for nothing, but formed it to be inhabited. Isaiah 45, 18. Planet Earth. What the Bible says. A generation is going and a generation is coming, but the earth remains forever. Ecclesiastes 1, 4. What it means. According to the Bible, the earth will never be destroyed and it will always be inhabited. So what is meant by the end of the world? Consider. The Bible compares the coming end of this world to what happened in the days of Noah. At that time, the earth was full of violence. Genesis 6.13 However, Noah was righteous. So God preserved Noah and his family, but he destroyed the wicked people by means of a flood. Referring to what happened back then, the Bible says, The world of that time suffered destruction when it was flooded with water. 2 Peter 3.6 That was the end of a world. Yet what was destroyed? Not the earth, but the wicked people on the earth. Thus, when the Bible speaks of the end of the world, it is not referring to the destruction of the planet. Instead, it is referring to the end of wicked people on the earth and to the system of things they have put together. What will end? Problems and wickedness. What the Bible says. Just a little while longer and the wicked will be no more. You will look at where they were and they will not be there. But the meek will possess the earth and they will find exquisite delight in the abundance of peace. Psalm 37, 10 and 11. What it means. The flood of Noah's day did not wipe out wickedness once and for all. After the flood, wicked people once again made life miserable for everyone. Soon, though, God will bring an end to wickedness. As the psalmist said, the wicked will be no more. God will put an end to wickedness by means of His kingdom, a world government that rules from heaven over a righteous human society. Consider, will those presently ruling the earth welcome rule by God's kingdom? The Bible indicates that they will not. Foolishly, they will oppose God's kingdom. What will be the result? God's kingdom will replace all human governments and it alone will stand forever. Daniel 2, 44. But why does human rulership need to end? Wanted, an end to human rulership. 
What the Bible says, it does not belong to man who is walking even to direct his step. Jeremiah 10, 23. What it means. Humans were not created to rule themselves. They do a poor job of governing other people and solving their problems. Consider, Britannica Academic notes that individual governments seem unable to handle the universal enemies of poverty, hunger, disease, natural disaster, and war or other violence. It then continues, Some believe that only a form of world government can make decisive headway against those evils. However, even if all human governments united, the world would still be ruled by imperfect humans who are unable to overcome the difficulties mentioned above. God's kingdom is the only government that has the power to solve all global problems permanently. Therefore, according to the Bible, the end of the world, the present wicked system of things, is not something that good people should fear. Instead, it is something to look forward to, because this ruined old world will be replaced by God's magnificent new world. When will this all happen? When will the end come? What Jesus said. As we learned in the preceding article, when the Bible speaks about the end of the world, it does not mean the end of the earth or mankind. Rather, it means the end of the present corrupt system of things and all those who support it. But does the Bible say when the end of this wicked system of things will take place? Consider two statements Jesus made about the end. Keep on the watch, therefore, because you know neither the day nor the hour. Matthew 25, 13 Keep looking, keep awake, for you do not know when the appointed time is. Mark 13, 33 So no one on earth knows exactly when this system of things will come to an end. However, God has set an appointed time, a definite day and hour, for the end to come. Matthew 24, 36 Does this mean that there is absolutely no way of knowing when the end is near? Not at all. Jesus told his disciples to look for a number of events that would indicate that the end was close at hand. The Sign these events would be the sign of the conclusion of the system of things. Jesus said, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be food shortages and earthquakes in one place after another. Matthew 24, 3 and 7. He also said that there would be pestilences, epidemic diseases. Are you seeing the events that Jesus prophesied? Devastating wars, famines and earthquakes, as well as relentless diseases, have ravaged the earth in our day. In 2004, for example, a massive earthquake in the Indian Ocean triggered a tsunami that killed some 225,000 people. In over one year, the COVID-19 pandemic resulted in some 2.6 million deaths worldwide. Jesus said that events like these would indicate that the end of this system of things is near. The Last Days The Bible describes the time period just before the end as the last days. 2 Peter 3, 3 and 4 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5 states that the last days would be marked by a steep moral decline. Do you see people who exhibit selfish, greedy, fierce, and unloving traits today? This too is evidence that we are living very near the end of the world. How long will the last days be? According to the Bible, only a short period of time. Then God will destroy those ruining the earth. Revelation 11, 15-18 and chapter 12, verse 12. The picture captions read, Wars. Between 2007 and 2017, deaths from armed conflict and terrorism rose by 118%. Illness. 
Some top killers are heart disease, stroke, lung disease, neonatal disorders, diarrheal diseases, cancer, tuberculosis. Hunger. In 2019, 8.9% of the world population was starving and 21.3% of children under 5 were malnourished and stunted. Global preaching. Over 8.4 million qualified preachers, Jehovah's Witnesses, distribute Bible literature in over 1,000 languages in 240 lands. Jesus' prophecy about the last days gives us reason for hope. The paradise earth is near. God has already set the day and hour when he will bring an end to this present wicked system of things. Yet there is more good news. God does not desire anyone to be destroyed. 2 Peter 3 9. He is giving mankind the opportunity to conform to his standards. Why? Because he wants us to survive the end of this world and live in his new world when the earth will be a paradise. God has organized a global teaching program to help people learn how to become part of the new world under his kingdom. Jesus said that the good news about God's kingdom would be preached in all the inhabited earth. Matthew 24, 14 Worldwide, Jehovah's Witnesses spent over 2 billion hours in 2019 preaching and teaching people the Bible's message of hope. Jesus said that this preaching campaign would be done throughout the earth before the end would come. The time for human rule is almost over. But the good news is that you can survive the end of the world and be part of the paradise earth that God has promised. The following article will discuss how you can live in that new world. The following is supplementary information. Just before the end of the world. In the last days, critical times hard to deal with will be here. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, haughty, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, disloyal, having no natural affection, not open to any agreement, slanderers, without self-control, fierce, without love of goodness, betrayers, headstrong, puffed up with pride, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having an appearance of godliness but proving false to its power. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 How you can live in a new world The preceding articles have shown that God will soon put an end to this ungodly human society with all its problems. We can be sure that this will happen. Why? Because God's word, the Bible, has promised. The world is passing away. 1 John 2.17 We can be certain that there will be survivors because the above Bible verse also promises the one who does the will of God remains forever. Therefore, the key to survival is doing God's will. To find out what God's will is, we must first come to know Him. Survive the end by coming to know God. Jesus said, This means everlasting life. They are coming to know you, the only true God. John 17, 3. To survive the end and live forever, we need to come to know God. That means much more than merely acknowledging that God exists or knowing a few facts about Him. We need to be friends with Him. As with any friendship that we want to flourish, we need to devote time to it. Maintaining a friendship with God is no different. Consider some vital truths we learn from the Bible that help us to develop and maintain a friendship with God. Truths we learn from the Bible We learn that God intended for us to live in paradise. He created the first humans, Adam and Eve, and placed them in a beautiful location called the Garden of Eden. They were perfect, and God had provided everything they needed in order to enjoy a happy life. 
Their life could have been endless. As long as they remained friends with God, they would never die. But they chose to disobey a simple command God gave them. We learn why we are now suffering hardships. By disobeying God, the first man, Adam, lost the opportunity to live forever, both for himself and for the rest of mankind. The Bible explains, Through one man, sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men. Romans 5.12 Just as a person might inherit a defect from his parents, all of Adam's children inherited imperfection from him. As a result, we grow old and die. We learn what God has already done to help us. The Bible says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son so that everyone exercising faith in him might not be destroyed but have everlasting life. John 3.16 God sent Jesus to the earth to give his life in our behalf. Regarding that act of love, an 86-year-old Indian man named Prabhakar says, It shows Jehovah's intense love for me. His love has given me the hope of everlasting life. The footnote reads, Jehovah is the name of God as revealed in the Bible. End of footnote. We learn how we can show appreciation for what God has done for us. The Bible says that we can show our appreciation for what God has done for us by observing His commandments. 1 John 2, 3. Jehovah God lovingly shows us what we can do to enjoy life now. God does not want us to suffer. He promises that if we follow His instruction, we will not only enjoy a happy life now, but also have the opportunity to live forever. Read God's Word, the Bible, daily. We regularly eat food to stay alive. But Jesus said, Man must live not on bread alone, but on every word that comes from Jehovah's mouth. Matthew 4, 4. Today we find Jehovah's words in the pages of the Bible. As you study that sacred book, you will learn vital truths about mankind's past, present, and future relationship with God. Pray to God for help. What can you do if you want to follow God's guidance, but are finding it difficult to stop doing things that He says are wrong? In that case, coming to know God can help you in a special way. Consider a woman whom we will call Sakura, who was living an immoral life. When she started to study the Bible, she learned about God's command to flee from sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6.18 Sakura prayed to God for strength and was able to stop this bad practice. But she still has to fight temptations. If immoral thoughts come to mind, she says, I talk honestly to Jehovah in prayer, knowing that I cannot fight this by myself. The power of prayer has drawn me closer to Jehovah. Like Sakura, millions are coming to know God. He is giving them the strength they need to make changes in their lives and live in a way that pleases Him. The better you come to know God, the more you will come to be known by God as a precious friend. Galatians 4, 9 Then you will qualify for survival into God's new world. But what will that new world be like? The paradise new world that is near. God created the earth so that righteous humans could live on it forever. He put the first human couple, Adam and Eve, in the beautiful Garden of Eden, and He gave them and their descendants the responsibility to cultivate the earth and to take care of it. Today's world is far from the paradise God meant it to be. However, God has not changed His mind. How will He fulfill His original purpose? As the preceding articles have shown, God will not destroy the earth itself. Rather, He will allow faithful humans to live on it. When God fulfills His promises, what will conditions on earth be like?
Global Government. Soon, when God's new heavenly government exercises authority over all mankind, the earth will become a happy place where people can live together in harmony and do good and satisfying work. God has appointed Jesus Christ to rule over the earth. Unlike so many rulers today, Jesus will have the interests of his subjects at heart. His rulership will be based on love, and he will be a kind, merciful, and fair king. International unity. The earth's new human society will not be divided by nationality or ethnicity. Mankind will be one united people. All humans living on Earth will love God and love their neighbor, and they will cooperate peacefully to accomplish God's original purpose of taking care of their home, the Earth. Harmony with the natural environment. When God's kingdom takes charge of the Earth, the Creator will take full control of all aspects of the weather. Keeping it in perfect balance. When he was on Earth, Jesus gave a glimpse of the power God gave him when he effortlessly calmed a frightening storm. Under Christ's rule, no one will have any reason to fear natural disasters. God's kingdom will also restore the original harmony between nature and humans. Perfect health and abundant food. Everybody will enjoy perfect health. No one will become ill, grow old, or die. People will enjoy a beautiful and clean environment like the one the first human couple enjoyed in the Garden of Eden. In the new world, just as in Eden, the ground will produce food in abundance, and all inhabitants of the earth will have plenty. Like God's ancient nation of Israel, everyone in the paradise. Will eat their bread to satisfaction, Leviticus twenty six four and five. Real peace and security. Under God's global government, all people will enjoy peace and will treat one another kindly and fairly. There will be no wars, no abuse of power, and no need to struggle for basic needs. The Bible promises. They will sit, each one under his vine and under his fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. Micah four three and four. Ample housing and satisfying work. Every family will have a home without fear of being displaced, and all the work that we do will be rewarding. As the Bible says, those living in God's new world will not toil for nothing or in vain. Isaiah sixty five twenty one to twenty three. The best education. The Bible promises the earth will certainly be filled with the knowledge of Jehovah. Isaiah eleven nine. Members of the new human society will learn from the infinite wisdom of their Creator Jehovah and about the beautiful things He created. They will not use their knowledge to build weapons or to harm other humans. Instead, they will learn how to live in peace with one another and how to care for the earth. Unending life. God took great care to prepare the earth so that we can enjoy life to the full each day. He intends for humans to live on earth forever. To fulfill his original purpose, God will swallow up death forever. Isaiah twenty-five eight. Death will be no more; neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The Bible promises. Revelation twenty-one four. God will give all humans, both those whom He saves when He destroys this wicked world, and the countless dead ones He will resurrect in the coming new world. The opportunity to live forever. Even now, millions worldwide are preparing for mankind's new beginning, so near at hand. Although imperfect, they are already trying to be the kind of people God would want in His new world. How? By learning about Jehovah God and the One whom He sent, Jesus Christ. Find out more about how you can survive the end of this world. 
and live in the better world soon to come.